will start the night by acknowledging the land that we are gathered on is a traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee Six Nations and the Shinabi. We acknowledge traditional territories in this manner as a sign of recognition and respect of indigenous peoples who have been on this land's land for hundreds of years and who continue to have presence. The recognition and contribution of historic importance of indigenous people must be clearly and overtly connected to our collective commitment to truth and reconciliation. We must promise in our communities, and in particular, we need to bring justice for missing and murdered indigenous women and girls across this country, as well, be, well bring justice to all the children who have suffered physical, mental abuse, along with death because of residential schools. Please take the spirit with you of truth and reconciliation and reflect on the differences that your personal commitment can make. Nay when, make which, and thank you. Harassment is not a joke. It is cruel and destructive behavior against others that can have devastating effects. It is an expression or of perceived power and superiority by the harasser over another person based on their sex, race, creed, color, religion, ethnic origin, place of origin, sexual orientation, political affiliation, gender identity, gender expression, marital status, family status, disability, language, age, conviction for which a pardon has been granted, social and economic class, activism, and participation in the union. Harassment on any of these grounds can be made the basis of a complaint to, the most, to most provincial and federal human rights commissions. Harassment can be defined as any unwelcome action by any person, whether verbal or physical, on a single or repeated basis, which humiliates insults or degrades. Unwelcome in this context means any action which the harasser knows or ought reasonably to know are not wanted by the victim of the harassment. Our goal as a union must be to help create the, an environment free of harassment. That means not only dealing with complaints when they arise but also watching for instance of harassment and confronting the source. Any resolution must reflect the serious nature of such, such acts and send a clear signal that will not be tolerated. All of us must challenge harassment whenever it occurs. If at any point a situation arises that could be reflective of a harassing course of conduct or comment from either member of the panel or a member of the audience, such per person will be asked to leave immediately. And I cannot stress that enough. There is zero tolerance in this building and in my union and in my life for harassment. <laughs> so just to go over the rules and, and the um, format for tonight, each candidate will have the opportunity of a three-minute opening remark. The moderator cannot read a prepared statement from a candidate who does not attend the meeting in person. See, I don't have to do that. The speaking order will be from left to right, which will be your left and right, not mine. Um, the first question asked, it'll be a one minute response time, followed by a counter by the candidates left to right of 30 seconds. Finally, the first responder to deliver their own rebuttal of 30 seconds. During the response, candidates may not bring up any new arguments or new evidence except in direct refutation of material which has already been presented. Members will speak only when call called upon by the moderator. There will be no heckling. There will be no points of order or points of pr personal privilege raised. There will be no props, e i.e. drawings, models that can be used. Signs are okay. Questions from the audience. As long as you, your question has been registered and screened by the two lovely people at the front door when you walked in, then your question can be asked. You will have 10 seconds to ask your question. All questions must be asked from the microphone set up at the very far back corner. We did that for TV purposes as well. Responses will be the same as previously mentioned. There will be two minutes of closing statements from each candidate. I now ask all of you to please put your cell phones on mute or silent. All right, question one, we're going to do some questions that come emailed in just to be fair for those that couldn't make it. We're going to do some questions for each one of the questions for each of the candidates before we open it to the floor. Question one, Mr. Hilderley. Oh, sorry, I got to do this properly. 
Can we introduce ourselves and do our three-minute opening? I always forget that part. Always. Mr. Hildley, please start with your three-minute opening. Is it on? Didn't think so. Just right here? Huh? Okay, sorry. There we go. Good evening, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, I'm David Hilderley. I have lived and worked in Oxford County for almost all my life. I'm married to my wife, Patrice, for 52 years, and we have three children and eight grandchildren. Families are very important to us. I was an educator across the county for 34 years, serving as a teacher, a consultant, a vice principal, and a principal in schools from Otterville to A.J. Baker, Hickson to Tilsonburg, and communities in between. I may have taught some of your relatives. For the last 17 years, I've been a realtor helping families settle into Oxford County. I have demonstrated leadership in many community endeavors over the past 24 years. I am proud to say I helped raise $1.5 million for the community, of which 800,000 went to the hospital. My entry into volunteerism and community leadership began with the chair of 2001 Canada Games, Oxford, and then moved to co-chair of the Relay for Life, co-chair of the VON Sakura House Golf Tournament, board member of the Woodstock Art Gallery, board member and expansion chair of Southgate Centre for Seniors, and a board member of Community Employment Services. I like volunteering for charities that make our citizens' lives better. I know Oxford County, and I want to be your local voice in Ottawa. I want to help make life more affordable for families and seniors through the child tax credit, $10 day care, and boosting income supplements for seniors. We need to build a strong economy by supporting small businesses, and creating new jobs, particularly in green manufacturing and technology. We need to protect our valuable farmland and the environment and create more affordable housing and work together. Make your vote count in this election by voting for me, David Hilderley, from Oxford, for Oxford. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilderly. Wendy Martin from the People's Party. Hello, everybody. I'm Wendy Martin from the People's Party of Canada. This is my third election that I've run for the PPC. I am a local candidate from Norwich. I've been in Norwich since 2015. I have also been a visitor of Norwich since I was 16 years old when my best friend moved to Oxford County. And I've always loved the area. That's why I decided to move here. Um, for my history on my jobs, I'm a recent graduate of York University. I decided to go back to school when I was 50, so I do have my degree in human resources. And before that, I've worked in the hospitality in industry as a top manager and trainer, corporate trainer. I went into bookkeeping and accounting after that. And then after a severe car accident, when I lost all of my memory, uh, my friend gave me an opportunity to go back to work for him in an innovation cavitation industry. So I do work with him, um, and I am back working with him after the COVID lockdown. And during COVID and to this day, I am a life insurance agent with a local co with a company that is um, under Unifor 247. So I'm a proud union member. Um, to be working for the, into my third year for that as well. And that's where I, you know, help protect families and make sure that everyone is looked after, kind of the role that I'll be taking here as your next MP uh, when you vote for Wendy Martin. Just want to give you a little bit of a background also in my family. Okay, I did take care of my mother um, while she was in palliative care and uh, made sure that I took care of her. I have a set of twins and my daughter does have two little beautiful girls as well. 
So my job here today is just to make sure that I speak for the silent majority who believe in law and order. I'm here to speak about Canadians and for all Canadians, and some of you will support me and some of you will not, and that's okay. I'm working to find solutions in between elections. I don't stop looking for solutions for the problems the government has created. I found solutions with biofuels while I was in the Dominican Republic for a week and how we can use natural organics and make biofuel and make biodiesel out of that so it's carbon neutral and carbon zero based. And I also just want to make sure that we're using our government in a positive way by reaching out to Canadians to make sure that they can find the innovations and solutions to these problems. And I also am going to be a fighter against Bill C-40, which is the 15-minute cities. In case you're all not aware of, Oxford is going to be part of that. So you're going to be limited on what you're going to be able to do. And we also want to make sure that we are protecting our green space. And I hope that you'll vote for Wendy Martin, PPC, on June 19th to be the next MP for Oxford County. So so I can represent your voice in Oxford. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Thank you. The Green Party, Oxford. Cheryl Baker, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, greetings, Oxford. My name is Cheryl Baker. This is my second time running here as a candidate in Oxford County. I ran here in the June 2022 provincial election and I want to thank you for the warm, respectful, welcoming reception. You were very generous with me at the door and I'd say that this is a very polite, respectful community. You guys are well engaged and you like hearing all options available. I run again as a federal this time for the Green Party of Canada. And Okay, so um, I have over three generations of family living here. We've been living here for over 50 years. Uh, my grandparents and their, grand their uh, brothers and sisters and in-laws all started out here in agriculture. And from there, the family and in-laws and cousins and second cousins and nieces and nephews and sisters all just exploded all over the Oxford County. So we're well invested in this community. We are advocating in this community. You may have even participated and generously donated to one of our advocating fundraisers or charities. I am an engineering background with a tool and die um, uh, design and risk management and with accounting and budget and project planning um, skills. I do importing and exporting in the automotive and aerospace industry. So I am well known with the two local in, um, automotive industries here. I also do a lot of um, <clears throat> training for apprentices. And when companies run out of work, they come to me and I find them contracts. I secure them for them so it keeps the people employed. I help companies be profitable. So that's how you guys get your raise. I also know, understand our NATO policy, our war strategy, our environmental and the reasons why we make policy and our democratic process and how we use our democracy to build our fundamental institutions which we value here in Canada because it keeps us safe and happy as well. We have so many rights and freedoms here. In this position, this is a federal seat and we'll be making decisions not just for Oxford County but right across this country. And we'll also be uh, using our civil law uh, process and our economic freedoms and our social justice uh, values as a progressive community to um, uh, influence other countries who are non-democracy -de uh, so that we can help them transition to a democratic society. You know, that's where all your freedoms are well protected as well. As a research, as a scientific research and developer, I've been paid by the government of Ontario and Canada to help um, research um, projects for Canadians to help in many different fields, manufacturing, medical, and agricultural as well. And uh, when, I, when I come around and I talk to people, one of my main joys is empowering people. Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask that you keep the mic a little bit close to you so you can, sure. it works just a little bit better and there's no feedback, okay? Sure. All right. Cody Grow, NDP. Thank you everyone for coming to the debate tonight and taking the time to learn about our platforms, our backgrounds, and our personal histories here in Oxford County. 
I moved to Ingersoll when I was eight years old, and I grew up in geared to income housing in the Adam Oliver Housing Cooperative there. My mother was a nurse, and my father was a transport truck driver. My family later rented farmhouses in both Foldens and Mount Algon, so I had the chance to have a nice rural upbringing. I currently work as a professor of history and indigenous studies at Western University, and I live in Ingersoll. My grandparents, Stanley and Sarah, were survivors of the Mohawk Institute Residential School, and I am a band member of Six Nations of the Grand River Reserve. I currently serve on the Joint Board of Directors for Alexandra Hospital Ingersoll and Tilsonburg District Memorial Hospital, and I joined these two organizations after my father passed away from cancer last year to assure that our healthcare system here in Oxford represents the families of Oxford. Tonight, and as a Member of Parliament, my focus will be on listening, responding, and advocating for the issues that have been expressed to me in my time growing up in this community and also while meeting people across Oxford during this campaign. People might say that some of the issues we discussed tonight are provincial or municipal jurisdiction, and while that might be the case, I feel like we need to have a strong federal advocate who is willing to proactively work with our provincial and municipal partners to assure that what we need here in our community is delivered to us. I will not stand by while people are evicted from their homes or can't afford their medical care. These need to be recognized as basic human rights. If elected, I would do everything in my power to use my platform to advocate for the people of Oxford. I would like to quickly share two stories from this past week that I heard here in Woodstock. While on Broadway Street, I met a woman who told me that she has been waiting for geared to income housing for nearly 10 years and that she thinks she will die before she receives this. And yesterday, I met a woman on Teeple Street who thought that it would be easier on her family if she died because she would be less of a financial burden. No one in Oxford County deserves to ever feel as these community members feel. It is an honor, duty, and responsibility to learn their stories and advocate on their behalf. We are only strong as a community if all of us are strong, and tonight I will present my plan for helping us reach that goal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grove. Again, I ask you to keep it as close as you can, so it does yeah. no feedback, please. Okay, from the Conservative Party, Arpan Khanna. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Arpan Khanna, and I'm running to be your Conservative Member of Parliament in our great riding here in Oxford. Like many of you, I come from humble beginnings. My parents came to Canada in the early 80s. Uh, mom from a farming family, dad working class. They came with $10 in their pocket and a dream for a better future for the next generation. And when they got here, they worked in factories, blue collar work, workers rolled up their sleeves and got things done. And, and they didn't come here for the beautiful weather. They came here for the freedom of our country, to make sure we have economic freedom. So the fact that we could raise our family the way we want to, we could practice our faith without fear, have medical freedom, have economic freedom. And friends, that is the Canadian dream that so many of newcomers, folks living here for generations have chosen Canada. And that is a promise that was the deal. If you worked hard, played by the rules, you got ahead in life. Unfortunately, after the last eight years of Justin Trudeau, we're starting to see that Canadian dream slip away. Canadians are working harder and harder, but barely getting by. We see skyrocketing living affordability crisis right now. Groceries are up, gas is up, hydro is up because of the carbon tax. We are seeing our farmers not be respected while liberal insiders are giving contracts to their insider friends. We are seeing gatekeepers blocking our communities. Affordable housing is now a crisis. We have more friends going to homeless shelters now than ever before in a record number. But despite the many challenges that our country is facing, I believe deep in my heart that better days are ahead. With the right leadership, we can get Canada back on track. And I'm running because I know Oxford has so much potential. And Oxford is a special place with amazing people. That is why I'm raising, my wife and I are raising my son Arvin here. And with your support, on June 19th, I will be given the opportunity to serve you in that role. I will be your public servant. I will be the hardest working guy you'll see in Parliament. And I will make sure as a Conservative, you'll have a strong leader fighting for our values day in, day out. So on June 19th, please vote Conservative.
folks, please. Kristen Heritage's party, John Marcus. Good evening, my name is John Marcus. As the sign obviously says, we've had the privilege as a family to live in Oxford County for over 56 years. We've shared each other's tears. We've intermingled. We've shared each other's joys. We've shared each other's sorrows. And we've shared each other's businesses. Our families intermingled in Oxford County, especially in the rural side of it, interwined with everyone. And so basically what I'm saying to you is we know Oxford County as a family. We're the only party that is complete pole life. We have a lot of very common sense policies. Look it up on the CHP website. I'm going to do something a little bit unconventional tonight, but it's been put on my heart. There's something that's called the Ten Commandments that can be put on two pieces of paper with large print and one piece of paper with small print. If every individual in this universe could discipline themselves to follow that, those two little pieces of paper, we would not need a policeman, we would not need an army, we would not need a judge, and we certainly wouldn't need a lawyer. And by the way, you wouldn't even need a door lock on your house and you wouldn't need an ignition for the car. The reason I'm saying this, Christianity often is said to be a negative, but at a true core, it gives freedom from fear. I went in with the, ten, with the climate thing, which is a hot topic day in, day out, and that's coordinated with a, a carbon footprint and agriculture. The reality is that Canada would be a huge beneficiary of climate change because our climate has only changed by 0.8 degrees in the last 125 years. A professor at the University of Guelph has determined that our food production has gone up 14 percent. Obviously our cooling is also, heating has also been good for our houses. The root problem of climate change is not Canada. We only contribute one to two percent of the whole problem. For Canada, climate change is win, win, win. Thank you. Thank you very much. As advertised, we had the community be able to have the opportunity to email in questions since we have a, a lot of questions here. I'm going to first ask each candidate a question from the emailed questions. Starting with number one, Dave Hilderly and the Liberals. The government has transferred millions of dollars to our province earmarked for health care spending and that money has not been used to stabilize up our health care system. How do you propose that transfer payments that are sent to the province are transparent and accounted for? Mr. Hilderly, one minute. Well, you're absolutely correct. We have transferred a lot of money to all provinces. Um, we uh, have an expectation that the province will have the responsibility to deliver the programs that are required to support our health care system. Um, unfortunately, um, that is uh, not happening in, in some situations, and uh, it's uh, my understanding that there's $4.5 billion in the Ontario government's uh, uh, health care that has been provided financially by the feds uh, and not being acted upon, although the needs are extremely high. So at this point in time, I would, I would suggest that perhaps we need to lean on our MPPs to make sure that the health care money we have provided is being well used. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, uh, 30 seconds. Oops, I'll the mic first. My steps You need a runner. That's all right. <clears throat> Ms. Martin, 30 seconds. Thank you very much. So Dave, my question to you is you mentioned um, that the expectation of responsibility for the money that you're transferring um, to the provinces, why do you not have those expectations set up as accountability steps so that your government can be accountable for the money that they are transferring to the provinces to make sure it is used for health care? Because if we've got $4.5 in Ontario, we certainly do need to use it. And yes, you're right, we need to also be contacting our MPPs to make sure that money is going to our hospitals and it's used properly. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Just 
hold the host here so it doesn't give you feedback. Okay, please. Ms. Baker, 30 seconds. All right, the health care transfer uh, payments. They are approximately over $100 billion a year. 30% um, of that is not applied to our health care services because there currently is no accountability and transparency that is effectively um, controlling uh, what the government is doing. So we need to put a policy in place where the accountability and transparency is released to the public for scrutiny. Mr. Grote, 30 seconds. The health care transfer is definitely something where the federal government has a say in how the provincial government is achieving its uh, obligations to oversee our health. I think that when we look at this health care transfer and see how it's not being used, we can also recognize it needs to be expanded to address other things such as mental health, which is not being addressed in our community. So when we're talking about the transfer being uh, appropriately applied, we also need to recognize that it needs to be uh, expanded in its scope and what it is able to do so that we can assure we are getting the need that is, or sorry, the care that is actually needed in our community as well. Thank you. Mr. Connor, 30 seconds. And I agree. I think the Liberals for the longest time have been giving out money without any conditions, and that's been a problem. Uh, we need to make sure that the money that is being allocated for health care goes to health care. We have an aging population, especially here in Oxford, and those funds need to be used at, at, the, right, at the right time, at the right place. And at, at my experience working with the provincial government, I'll be able to work with all levels of government to make sure the funding we're getting is actually being used for the needs of our community. Like Cody mentioned, mental health is a huge component of our, of our funding as well. We'll have to look at that. So, um, Thank you, Mr. Khan. Mr. Marcus, 30 seconds, please. It's actually fairly simple. Healthcare is a provincial jurisdiction, and they have a fair bit of autonomy how they spend that. And it's for them to try to lever money out of the federal government through transfer payments. But healthcare is not a federal jurisdiction, never has been. Thank you. Mr. Hillary, 30 second rebuttal, please. The federal government is very aware of the increasing uh, health care concerns. We provide the money, and I think we have to uh, remember that the provincial government delivers the programs, and they need to be held accountable for not looking after our citizens. Thank you. Okay, the next question is for the PPC party, Ms. Martin. So remember all these questions have been emailed to the political action team of Unifor Local 636. Your party has been described as a far right-wing populist party. How does that not radically and mutually exclude? Well, the PPC is not a far right party or radical at all. We are a social conservative party, so we're middle right. And we're there for the people to make sure that government is held accountable for their finances. We want to make sure that everyone is taken care of in Canada. Everyone is equal under the Canada flag and under Canada. So there is no difference between you or another person. So when you take a look at the PPC, we are there for every single Canadian. And we are definitely not a far right. And we are a populist party because we're brand new and we are expanding throughout our country. Thank you. Oops, sorry. That's all right. This is why I'm tall. Ms. Baker, 30 second response. The far right populist saw uh, that um, party that mutually excludes people is um, very discriminatory, I find. Um, I believe in a society where every voice is respected when it, it is um, advocated 
and um, voices together is what creates a safe, uh, profitable, growing society. Um, I find that the party here is in violation of the Charter of Human Rights, Freedoms, and our human rights. And we need a... Thank you, Ms. Baker. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Grove, 30 seconds, please. Uh, when LGBTQ community members do not feel safe in their own communities because of policies that you advance, then you do not stand up for everyone in this country. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Connor, 30 seconds, please. See, for me, I think it's not about left or right. It's about common sense, making sure that we're united as Canadians, fighting for our fundamental values. And I think, unfortunately, we've seen this divisive rhetoric being pushed around too much. We have to be united as Canadians, and that is what we'll do as, with the Conservative Party of Canada. Thank you. Mr. Marcus, 30 seconds, please. Christian Heritage Party is a, a party of compassion, for instance, in the transgender movement, which is a hot topic. I feel very sorry for them. My heart goes up to that, out to them because they're being manipulated. And every time they hit their device, dollars fly all over the place, and they are left with the scars, and those who receive the dollars live in high places. We are a party of compassion. Mr. Hilderly, 30 seconds, please. Well, most certainly the party in power should be inclusive of all people. And I'm proud to be saying that the Liberal Party is the most inclusive and uh, we accept and respect people. Thank you. Ms. Martin, 30 second rebuttal, please. Thank you very much. The PPC does not exclude anybody at all. We are all united under one Canadian flag. We have member, lots of members in our party, part of the LGBTQ um, community, and we respect them as well. Now, we do have our rights to the fact that in Norwich, we know I stood up against um, you know, flying anything other than a non-governmental flag because it is part of our charter to make sure that everyone is protected and everyone is under unity under the Canadian flag and everyone has the same rights. So I don't understand when you're telling me LGBTQ does not have rights. Moving on to the next question for the Green Party, Cheryl Baker. Socioeconomic issues are at the forefront of every campaign. How does the Green Party align its desire to provide environmental protectors, protections with expansion and innovation in Oxford? One minute, please. How does the Green Party align with um, expanding the environmental protections, social and economic? Um, the Green Party stands for um, uh, civil law, economic freedoms, social justice, environmental, political, and um, social problem solving skills. You cannot solve one of these without solving them all together. So therefore, we must work collaboratively together to solve all of our problems. We cannot silence voices. We need to be always advocating for each other in Parliament. The environmental um, uh, policies that we have are created which involve a decision made from civil law, economic freedoms, social justice, and environmental and political and uh, social problem solving skills. This is why when we make a decision, it involves it, all of them together. Because this community has a lot of different, multiple... <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Grill, 30-second response, please. 
Ontario is losing 316 acres of agricultural land every single day. Municipalities feel they do not have enough incentives to build up, to build apartment buildings, to help infill in our communities. It's the role of the federal government to help assure that we do have incentives for doing that so that our environmental lands can be protected. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kahn, a 30 second response, please. The Conservative Party does not believe that the carbon tax is a solution to save the environment. It's driving up the cost of living, it's driving up the cost of groceries, it's driving up the cost of gas, it's driving up the cost of heating your home. That is not the solution. We believe in technology and innovation that will protect our environment. Thank you. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. If all of society would follow agriculture, we've reduced our carbon footprint by five points. We've gone from 40 bushel to 200 bushel corn. As a matter of fact, we've got your food down to 32 days. If the federal government had done what agriculture had done, we would be really rich because it takes six months of your wages to pay for it. Agriculture leads the way in carbon footprint. We lead by example or we go broke. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30 second response, please. Improving the environment is responsibility of everybody. Uh, we all need to be in this together, working to create an environment that will be healthy for our families, our children, and our grandchildren going forward. Uh, we do it by balancing good paying jobs and uh, paying for the environmental tax that way. Thank you. Ms. Martin, 30 second response, please. Thank you. When you're looking at environmental policies, why aren't you looking for the solutions to the problems that the governments have created that you have supported in the Green Party? Why aren't you looking to try to help farmers? And why are you still thinking that the carbon tax is also going to be helping farmers and families you know, within our communities? Because Oxford is a rural community and we need to make sure that we're getting all of those environmental items looked after. But it doesn't seem like civil law or social justice would actually work um, when it's coming to our environment and protecting our earth, water, and soil. Do I get a chance to yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Let me get the mic to you. Ms. <laughs> Baker, 30 second rebuttal, please. Okay, 30 second rebuttal to her uh, statement, why aren't you helping farmers? We are helping farmers. The Green Party up in Parliament voted for an exemption of the carbon tax for farmers. It went to House three times through a vote, and it will go to a rise and be an enacted in the next vote. So the Green Party voted for an exemption of carbon tax for farmers, so that farmers can be profitable and continue to provide you the, the uh, food which feeds you. Um, we are all advocating to, review, to reduce. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Okay. Moving on to the next question for the NDP. The NDP leader Jagmeet Singh has been criticized for propping up the Liberal government and not standing to its true core values. How does this align with values and campaign promises made by your party? I think there's a lot of very serious and pressing issues that are shaping our community right now and since we are a minority government I am willing to work with any party across party lines to assure that we can actually get the support that we need instead of playing politics and not getting anything done. During this coalition, sorry, not during this coalition, during this partnership, what we've seen is we have seen dental care being advocated for, and we have now been able to provide dental care for several millions of Canadians, and uh, that is a vital part of our healthcare system now. Thank you very much. I'm not the only one that adds humor. Mr. Kana. <laughs> 30 second response, well, it's good to see the NDP agree that this is a coalition with the Liberals and the NDP. It's sad to see that. 
The liberals are prop the NDP are propping up the liberals, adding a carbon tax. They're making life more affordable. And it's sad to see Jagmeet Singh doing that. It, it, a vote for the NDP is a vote for the liberals. The vote for the liberals is a vote for the NDP. They should be sharing tables today, actually. Uh, that's, that's, that's their coalition platform. It's sad to see that. Okay. Well, you want me to say we'll just put the water on the other side. I think that we can We can share. You guys are just good people. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. It's very simple. Whoever voted for the NDP is betrayed, and whoever voted for the Liberal is betrayed. It's what you call high class politics, and I'm opposed to it. That's not democracy, that's dictatorship. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30 second response, please. I would just say that working together is the way to get good legislation for our Canadians. It's very, very important. We need to take care of families, and good legislation will take care of families. Thank you. Ms. Martin, 30-second response, please. Thank you very much. I think it's a moral compromise for the NDP to be working so closely with the Liberal government. Um, you know, they promise you one thing, and their party platform should be stuck together in exactly what it is that they want to do. So how are you representing your people when you're compromising to prop up the Liberal government and with the carbon tax and everything that you say? So it's kind of like Jagmeet is speaking out of both sides of his mouth. Whatever is good for him, then he's going to compromise just to make sure that it's good for his pocketbook and not for the people. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. Okay. Uh, the Green Party of Canada and the Green Party of Ontario is about working for people, advocating for people first. Um, the NDP and the Liberals. Uh, the recent budget does not do enough to help people or support people all across Canada. I say enough is enough. Now the PC party repeatedly asked me to campaign for them, cross the floor and become a PC candidate and run here and in other regions as well. I politely declined because of our Green Party values, support everyone. And we Thank believe... You Thank you. Mr. Grill, 30 second rebuttal, please. I maintain that given the seriousness of a lot of things that are shaping our community right now, I am willing to work with anyone across party lines to assure that we can actually get the help that we need for our community members here in Oxford County. That is something that I will be willing to do with Conservatives or with Greens or with Liberals if the opportunity arises and I get to serve as your Member of Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next question for the Conservatives. Universal health care and social services are on the backbone of Canadian society. How do you propose to save the foundation and promote expansion? That's a great question. I think it's very important that uh, we look at what's going on in our society today. We have 1.5 million of our Canadians visiting a food bank. One in five Canadians are skipping meals. Mothers are now putting water in the milk for their baby's food. And that is sad to see. And that was never the case before. That's a rising, crazy stats that we're seeing. Record number high. Why? Food inflation has been on top of mind for many. It's double the national average. As conservatives, we believe in making sure life is more affordable. Right now, groceries are going up by $1,000. The carbon tax has been driving that. It's making life tougher and tougher for Canadians. Again, it's driving the cost of groceries, heating your home, and putting gas in your car. These are all policies that hurt the bottom line. So we have to make sure that we're giving Canadians the tools they need to succeed and to live their lives. That's the best support system we could do. Obviously, as Canadians, we're compassionate, and we gotta make sure that those that need help get the help they deserve as well. So a, a Conservative Party will make sure that's protected. Oh yeah, you guys are 
Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. The first governance in society is the family. We know there's a tremendous amount of family breakup. CHC policy would enforce and engage in many different enhancements of the family because it's the cornerstone of society and that's the building block of society and that's where we have to begin and that's where we have to set our sights. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30 second response please. Just to, uh, just to be clear, it's the Liberal Party uh, it, who has made life more affordable for families, reducing childcare by 50%. Hey, hey, hey. Respect, remember? Start again, Mr. Hoverly, please. Yeah. The Liberal Party is trying to make a life more affordable for families, reducing child care by 50% and going to $10 a day, child care benefits for every child, Canadian dental care plan, and as well increasing guaranteed income for seniors. Thank you. Ms. Martin, 30 second response, please. Yes, a PPC government will take care of inflation and keep it down to zero to two percent. As we can see, inflation has gone um, crazy here. Now we're talking about the carbon tax that you had mentioned, uh, Arpan. So what does your government plan to do with the carbon tax? Are you planning on putting in another carbon tax or are you planning on axing it all like the PPC party would do? Thank you. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. To the PC party, your cuts are too austere. They are too severe. PCs hide billions, billions of money collected from taxpayers with no accountability, no transparency of where that money is and where it was spent. We the people demand of every dollar collected from taxpayers and accountability and transparency item by item of every dollar. Plus, why are you not reinvesting in public social services and not starving these programs so Thank tight you, that Mr. we Mayor. cannot take a breath? Mr. Grove, 30 second response please. Affordability and cost of living is something that has shaped my family here in Oxford County my entire life and it's something that we can't pretend is a new problem based on the problems of one specific government. If I am elected to be your next member of parliament, I will make sure to advocate from the perspective of a family member who has lived through some of these issues. We're going to take federal taxes off home heating. We're going to assure that the guaranteed income supplement for seniors is geared to the cost of inflation to assure that none of us are left behind. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kahn, a 30-second rebuttal, please. Well, for the Liberal Party, the only ones that are living an affordable life are Liberal insiders, and we've seen that time in, time out. When it comes to the PPC ask, asking us if we're going to axe the carbon tax, yes, we're going to axe the carbon tax and put more money back into the pockets of our families. The Liberals raised the carbon tax on April 1st, and there's a new one coming July 1st as well. Only a Conservative government will stop this tax and make sure Canadians have the tools and the financial resources they need to succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next question for the Christian Heritage Party. How will, how will human rights for all people be protected and promoted by yourself and your party? Equal justice for everyone. We are a party of compassion. We also believe in the court of law is restitution, which is a biblical problem. So in other words, if somebody is caught stealing, he has to go out and bring those goods back to that other person. It's a fundamental problem because a lot of this crime goes on and other things go on. Justice is equal for all. What we have too much of in society is justice for the elite and no justice for the poor, and that has to be changed. 
Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30-second response, please. Well, the, the Liberal Party has always stood up for every citizen, and uh, it's quite like the culture of Oxford that we have here, where we care for each other, and we support each other, and we look after each other. Ms. Martin, 30-second response, please. Thank you. When you're talking about human rights, I am a pro-life uh, candidate that's sitting up here, so I think we need to make sure that we're protecting the pre-born as well. I'd love to see it from um, conception right to natural death, but we know that's not going to happen. But the PPC will put forth a bill that will limit abortion after 24 weeks and the baby can survive outside the womb um, on their own with medical treatment. So I think when we take a look at that, human rights starts right from conception right till natural death. Thank you. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. You speak of Christian values and the Ten Commandments. Um, our society and our civil laws and our justice system is based upon that. That is why um, when you go into court, you have a civil law case. We, the poor also have the opportunity for justice as well. So you are not well informed. Governing unconstitutionally with passing laws, policies, or bylaws without consultation of people is what we need to be very concerned about federally and provincially because that's what's happening to our country, our province, and this community. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Mr. Grote, 30 second response, please. I go back to my story at the beginning where I met a woman on Teeple Street yesterday who's thought that it would be easier on her family if she died because she would be less of a financial burden. In my opinion, we have a framework for human rights in this country, but if people feel that way, then we are not acting on our obligations, and it's up for all of us to stand up together to assure that nobody feels this way. Thank you. Mr. Kahn, a 30-second response, please. I absolutely agree. I think as Canadians, we are compassionate people, and we have to have a strong human rights um, support system here. We're seeing our own government attacking human rights here in Canada. We're being censored online, Bill C-11. And those are basic human rights uh, violations happening with our freedom of expression. So we got to make sure we're, we're protecting our folks here in Canada, but also being a strong voice for the voiceless across the world as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Marcus, 30-second rebuttal. As you all know, we are a complete pro-life party, which means compassion. I do agree with what's been said here about some of the bills coming down, which will take away our rights. We also have another issue in society, is that the fact that many people are being marginalized when they speak freely and they're told to be quiet, that's not democracy. And I think we all would agree with that, and we have to go forward supporting free speech, even though it looks a little crooked sometimes. That's the foundation of society. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'll take this time to open the, the floor for the questions. So if you have, if you were handed a number when you registered your question, I'm gonna ask number one to make their way back to the mic. And then we're going to just continue to go through. So if number two and three want to go, just be respectful, be quiet until the questions are asked. Again, it's the same format. They'll ask a candidate a question and everybody will have 30 seconds to respond. And is everybody comfortable or is it getting hot in here just as me for doing my laps here? No, we're good. That's what I really want to know. We're good. It's hot. Can we turn the hair on, please, sir? <laughs> Probably a bit of both. <laughs>
All right, so we have a question on mic one. Remember, remember, all the questions have 10, you have 10 seconds to get your question out. First, by stating, the time will start when you start asking your question. First, start the candidate you want to ask the question of, and then we'll go from there, please. Uh, the first question will be directed at uh, the Liberal representative, David Hillary. Okay, go. Okay, I want to know your position on Bill C-11, C-21, and the future of Canadian energy. Thank you for the question. Mr. Hillary, you have one minute to respond. The future of energy? Bill C-11, Bill C-21, and the future of Canadian energy. Three-part question. Okay. Your position. Well. I'm, I'm going to have to say that I am not yet knowledgeable enough to respond to that question. I am learning and I will intend to keep on learning and when I have the opportunity I, I will just keep on going. If you don't know C11 or C21 you shouldn't be sitting there. Hey, 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 yeah. not, not again. That is not going to be tolerated from anyone. Am I clear? Thank you. He was honest and said he couldn't. Another comment and you're out the door. Pretty simple. If you have any comments or concerns. Okay. All right. I will. Thank you. Bill C-11 is the censorship bill, and we would definitely throw that out um, in the PPC. Bill C-21 is the gun um, legislation, which is unfair to farmers and to legal gun owners. We would also repeal that as well. And when it's in our environment, we want to make sure that we are protecting our water, our soil, and our air. And we have to make sure to understand that CO2 is not a pollutant. It's actually something very valuable for our farmers and actually for our way of life because it feeds our plants and in return they give Thank us oxygen. Ms. Baker, 30 second response please. Okay, Bill, am I, can you hear me? Okay, Bill C-11, that is the censorship bill. Bill C-21, that is the gun legislation. Now, I am in support of our hunting and fishing laws here and right across Canada. I'm also Indigenous, so I support, I support our um, gun legislation. I support um, making sure that our guns are not um, being brought into our schools, our community to kill people. So why do we need an assault weapon to do hunting? I disagree with that part. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Mr. Grote, 30 second response please. Both pieces of legislation are examples of where the conservative rhetoric does not reflect what is actually happening. Through Bill C-11, individual posts would not be censored. Through Bill C-21, no guns will be taken away from you. There will be restrictions on future models. Both of those are something that I can support. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Canna, 30 second response, please. I'm glad that the NDP are doing what they do in the Parliament. They're supporting the Liberals. Uh, it's the part of their coalition. Bill C-11 does, in fact, censor our basic rights of what we can see, what we can say, what we can do online. That bill will be scrapped under the Conservative government. Bill C-21 attacks our lawful gun owners. As a lawful gun owner myself, we are not the criminals. Trudeau gives criminal. he goes after our hunters, our sports shooters, our farmers, while criminals and violent repeat offenders get a slap on the wrist. Under C-21, we'll make sure we scrap that and make sure our gun laws are protected. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. CHB supports common sense private gun control. We are against C11. We also promote pipeline from sea to sea. We have our natural resources. Why send our money out to somebody else when we have them in our own backyard? That's Canada. We need to support ourselves, not the Arabs.
keeping it clean tonight, right? Mr. Hurley, 30 seconds rebuttal, please. My apologies for not understanding uh, the uh, code names for gun control, for example. Uh, Mr. Khanna, you are actually um, spreading fear about what's going to happen to gun owners. Farmers and hunters will still be able to retain their rifles for the uses that they need them on the farm or when hunting or perhaps even for sport shooting. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Okay, going to the mic for question number two. This is directed at Mr. Hilderly. So let us know what do you think about the first time homeowner's stress test and what will you do to help single families get a mortgage? Sorry, can I ask you to speak a little louder on that one, please? What do you think about the first time homeowner's stress test and what will you do to help single families get a mortgage? Mr. Hilderly, one minute response, please. Well, the stress test was put in to um, protect people uh, from not uh, over uh, burdening their debt for a house. Um, I didn't like it much as a realtor, I'll be honest with you, but the reason is for future protection. So now those folks who um, got a mortgage at 2% and are now being re-evaluated uh, re for a mortgage uh, at 7% are going to have trouble paying that. So that's the intent behind it is to protect families from having that happen to them and possibly losing their homes. Thank you. Yes, Mark, 30 second response, please. Yes, so David, as a realtor, you understand the mortgage um, that we normally we get at 2% and 7% is probably the, you know, the lowest, maybe 6.5 is what I've been seeing out there and it's probably gonna increase again. So you're saying you wanted to protect the families. Well, with CMHC, when we're taking a look at the home buyers that they have to have, you know, they've got to insure their mortgage, maybe what we're doing there is we need to get rid of that so that we actually have a mortgage that young families can actually buy and keep their house and keep the inflation down so that our Thank interests you, don't go up. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. The first time homeowners stress test, how, how will we help uh, single families to get a mortgage? while our central bank's policy decision-making needs reform because that drives our mortgage qualifications. And um, in my opinion, um, we want everyone to have a house if you want to buy a house because it's people first, not the banks, not the mortgage companies. It's people first. Thank you. Just for the bell going. Mr. Grote, 30 second response please. To me, the core of this issue is the fact that we do not have a diversified housing stock here in our community of Oxford County. We have too many people who are struggling to either buy homes or even have a place to live at the end of the night. In my opinion, we need to further incentivize municipalities to diversify our housing stock so it's available to all levels of income. And again, that will include revisiting things such as the stress test and the CMHC. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Khan, a 30 second response, please. Well, it's a great question because right now the young generation, the next generation are saying that nine out of 10 of them will never be able to own a home because of the policies the Liberal government has brought in. We had eight consecutive interest rate hikes in one year. That's because of their failure of managing our country's uh, books and inflation. So for us, I think we have to get back to the basics. Um, down payment has now been doubled for, in order for you to enter the market, putting many of them out of reach. So a conservative government will look at all options to make sure affordability is top priority and making sure that our, our kids, the next generation, have the same shot that we had growing Thank up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. 
Forty percent of the money has been printed in the world in the last number of years, which is the root cause of inflation caused by politicians and voters. We believe in a balanced budget. The end result of inflation is like a good bottle of whiskey and you have a bad hanging or at the end. We've had too much excessive printing of money, which has caused this whole problem. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30 seconds for bottle, please. I know all too well how hard it is for young people to get into the housing market, um, but I do appreciate that the Liberals are trying to help with the tax-free home, first home savings account up to 40,000 and a first-time home buyer's tax credit for up to 10,000. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll go to question, I think three we're at. Okay. Uh, so my question is for the uh, CBC candidate, Art McCann. You advised in an interview with CTV News on May 16th that you were involved with several local organizations and charities in Oxford County. Can you expand on which local charity organizations you were involved with and in what capacity? Mr. One, Kana, one minute response, please. It's a great question. I'm a big believer of giving back to our community. I think neighbors helping neighbors should be a top priority, and we're seeing a lot of that, especially during a time of need, especially when we're seeing more and more of our friends suffering at the food banks, uh, suffering at different organizations. I've been as active as I can be in the community. When we hear from food banks like Operation Sharing that they need some supplies, they need some support, we get out there, we make sure they have the support they need. I was proud to be a part of a charity called Global Medic. That charity helped give almost 800 pounds of food to Operation Sharing. I a, a, a sizable donation to make sure they have some support. Same thing with DASO, we reached out to them. They had a need for making sure there was female hygiene products. We made sure we secured that from our, our volunteer network to make sure we helped them. I'm a big believer that Oxford in Oxford, we help each other. And that's the strength of our community. We work as a team, as a family, and help our neighbors in need. And I will continue doing that every step of the Thank way. You, Mr. It's not just in politics. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. My response is probably going to be very different. We are involved in the community in many different ways, and if we know somebody that's in financial trouble, we will actually go in and help. We've written personal checks to people that have been in financial trouble. I think a lot of times it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's an example on how you live. It's also an example of a Christian helping somebody else without going to the government for a handout. It's a personal responsibility. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30 second response, please. I've been helping out families in this community for over 24 years, and uh, Operation Sharing is definitely an excellent organization. But when I spoke with Sean Shapton the other day, who's the director of Operation Sharing, he said that you are not really a supporter of his operation. You have not do uh, donated time, you have not donated energy, and you've not donated caring. So um, I just appreciate that clarification, that's all. Thank you. Ms. Well, Martin, 30 I'll, second response, please. Thank you. I'll agree that Oxford County is definitely in need of support and our volunteer hours. I personally am the chair of the Accessibility Advisory Board in Norwich, Ontario. I am doing my third term now, making sure that our items are accessible and our township is accessible as well. But we have to reach out to, we have a lot of homelessness and a lot of drug issues in our community. We need to make sure that we can help these people and that's by also helping and supporting the organizations and the churches that feed and clothe everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much. Ms. Baker, 30 second response please. To the NDP, Liberals and PCs, if you would stop making deep, deep cuts to our public services and expand them and reinvest in people, we would not need to do fundraising or charity drives. Reinvest in all our public services effectively 
with expanded services so no one is left behind or falls through the gaps. Um, when PCs want money, they always cut our services first. And the people suffer and you suffer because it costs you hundreds of billions in extra money when we have to use our police services and our mental health. Mr. Grove, 30 seconds of response. Donating to organizations like Operation Sharing is something that those of us who have grown up in this community have done our whole lives. It is not just a photo op for a campaign. It's something that I'll be continuing to do after this election is over because I'm dedicated to this community. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Connor, 30 second response, please. I think, uh, you know, when I was growing up, my parents always taught me, help your neighbor, help your friend who is suffering. And those are the values that I'm teaching my son as well here in Oxford. Oxford is a great community, and we all got to unite as Canadians to help one another. But throwing cheap political points and just throwing rhetoric right now is not the solution either. These charities need our help. So my recommendation to you, those watching at home, please get out there. Go support Operation Sharing. Go support DAS and the, the women's shelter we have. Go support any charity you can because no matter when you do it or how you do it, it's the right thing to do. Thank you, Mr. We'll go back to the mic for question number four, please. Uh, this question. Well, hold on a second, please. Go ahead. This question is for the Conservative candidate. Um, I just would like a, what side you are on. Are you pro-choice or pro-life? Mr. Khan, a one minute response, please. Growing up, I've always been taught to value the sanctity of human life. I've been very, very clear on my position that, you know, as a, on a human rights basis, we make sure that we protect everybody. I am pro-life. The Liberals are bringing in this, this program right now called Medical Assistance in Dying. Um, they are pushing the most vulnerable to end their lives. As a Conservative member of Parliament, I'll be voting against that. Um, I think, you know, in a society, you have to be compassionate to help us. We've seen those folks struggling in food banks. They're now being encouraged to end their lives. We're seeing f our veterans who served our country towards ending their lives. And that is not the right approach. In Canada, we've got to be compassionate and help those who need the help the most. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, 30 seconds response, please. Obviously, we're pro-life, but in reality, the whole abortion movement statistically hasn't been that effective. When you look at all the free advertising, you look at all the heads that have rolled over it, statistically, the world went from 1987 from 3 billion to 5 billion. Statistically, it's been ineffective because the power of life is greater than the power of death. Thank you. Thank you. Response, please. I don't need 30 seconds for this one. I'm definitely pro choice. Miss Martin, 30 second response, please. Yes, as you know, I already said I was pro-life, so I do have a question uh, for Arpan, because when he started his campaign, the nomination, pro-life was at the bottom of his platform. Now he's pro-life, now that he's elected, but policy number 70 under their policy declarations of the Conservatives will not let you vote for or against abortion. You have to abstain. How would you like to answer that for your Conservative supporters today? Thank you. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. I'll keep this very short. The Green Party of Canada and the Green Party of Ontario is pro choice. We respect what a woman's choice is. The PCs are trying to in introduce a motion in the Parliament House to remove a woman's right to choose what to do with her body. We are pro choice. We respect what women's right to choose is. And we'll take that question right across this country. Thank you very much. Mr. Grote, 30-second response, please. 
I will follow the lead of uh, David and Cheryl, 100% pro-choice. And with that, I would also like to critique our parents' comments about medical assistance and dying. This has been an avenue for my family members who have been terminally ill to approach their illness of dignity on their own terms. And I fully support medical assistance and dying. And I'm against any tactics about it. Mr. Kanna, 30, 30 seconds rebuttal, please. I think it's a sad time in our affairs and our government when now people are being pushed to end their lives. That is not what Canada is about. It's about making sure that people are given hope and support they need to do that. And to Wendy's question, um, our party believes in a free vote. We believe to vote, and I will vote my conscience every time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Going back to the mics, which I believe we're at question five. This is good. Not on. Hi. This is going to be pretty easy. This is a yes or no answer. Um, I'm going to start with David Nolan, and I would like all the candidates to, to answer this question. Do you agree with Norwich Municipal Council's decision to prohibit the flying of the Pride inclusion flag on this four buildings? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Mr. Hurley, you have one minute response, even though it's a yes or no. <laughs> No, I do not approve. Ms. Martin, 30 seconds for response, please. Well, I do approve because there's actually a Supreme Court ruling that states that all municipalities and every government building should only fly government flags. Because if you start to fly other people's flags, that means that your whole community is in agreement with that. And that is not fair because you know what? It opens up the doors for a lot of hatred and a lot of flags that are not welcomed here in Canada. So why not fly under all flags here with the government of the Canadian flag, the Ontario flag, and the municipal flag? That's unity. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. No, I do not approve. Jurisprudence, case law precedent, states very clearly this is a clear violation of freedom of expression. We have the right to erect a, a flag or a sign that's in a respectful manu manner without hate speech on any municipal property. And this, it was. This case was here already heard in our Superior Court of Law system, and this decision is governing unconstitutionally as it's a violation of your personal Thank freedom you. of speech. Mr. Grove, 30 second response, please. No, I do not agree with a policy at all. I would like to thank Alicia Stubbs, Councillor for Norwich, former Councillor for Norwich, for her advocacy and dignity in upholding the values of that community and ensuring that everyone uh, can be respected and honored and recognized mm -hmm. within their community. So 100% no against Norwich policy. Thank you. Mr. Kenna, 30 second response, please. I believe in the freedom for everyone. You can come from whatever country you want, whatever language you speak, whatever God you worship, whatever your sexual orientation is. Everyone in Canada has a right to live the life their own way. That makes Canada so great. And that is why the Canadian flag is all inclusive of that. It represents the values of all Canadians. And look, there's gonna be different perspectives from both sides. I don't believe in division. I wanna make sure we find a way to unite Canadians. Stop the rhetoric. Let's sit at the table and solve this issue because it's, it's about bringing Canadians together and not dividing. And I was in Norwich, and I see a lot of pride flags on people's yeah, private properties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's their individual right, and they have the right to do that. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. Yes, I approve the decision because the Canadian flag is all inclusive. It covers everybody. We don't need more than that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hurley, 30 second rebuttal, please. There is no place for hate in our communities, and 
I learned an expression today from one of the members of the LGBTQ community that says, love is louder than hate. I agree with that. Thank you very much. So back to the mics for question number six. Who's got question six? Uh, this is for uh, Dave Hilderly. Okay. Dave, uh, will you be Trudeau's man in Oxford and continue to support the carbon tax when your leader is flying on average 10,000 kilometers a month? Mr. Hilderly, one minute response, please. As I mentioned before, it's everybody's responsibility to uh, improve the environment. The carbon tax is meant to help gain improvements in our environmental situation. Uh, Mr. Trudeau's travels are for international work and uh, he's an excellent diplomat in support of Canada around the world. That's important work to do. Um, it's, it's important for us to be able to recognize that the carbon tax will improve the environment. And it's also important for us to recognize that uh, it's an effort supported by everybody. And our farmers are doing it, we can do it too. Thank you. Response. Yes, we're paying right now between 40 and 60 cents a liter for every liter you put into your gas tank. So I'd like to ask David, you're so much on a green environment, why isn't Trudeau flying his plane with electric um, batteries? You know, those lithium ion batteries, let's see how far he could get on that because that would be really putting your foot where your mouth is, right? Or your mouth where your foot is, whatever it is, but you're gonna actually stand behind these green batteries that are toxic for the people that are doing them. But why don't you just draw, uh, fly you on those? I think it'd be Thank great. You. Thank you. Response, and let's keep it down in the audience, please. Okay, to uh, David Hilderly, Liberals. Um, with the carbon tax, so we all voted to reduce carbon tax for the farmers. That's our first step. Whenever we make a policy or a bill or a law or a bylaw, just remember everything can be amended and changed and upgraded as we move progressively forward. We're all working together to reduce the environment and climate impact, impact that we have when we use natural fossil fuels. So, to support... Um, Thank you, Ms. Baker. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Grove, 30 second response. It's the role of a member of parliament representing Oxford to assure that their party leader, their party platform understands the needs that affect our community. As a member of parliament, I'll assure that's reflected. A good example with the carbon tax, for instance, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture has said that right now they would like an exemption for nitrogen fertilizer because there's no viable alternatives. So if that's what we need right now in our farming communities, we'll advocate for that until there's a viable alternative in place so we don't penalize our own community members. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on a 30 second response, please. It's very, very clear that a vote for Mr. Hilderly is a vote for Mr. Trudeau's carbon tax. There's no ifs or buts about that. And the carbon tax that Mr. Hilderly talks about has not improved our carbon emissions. It's actually caused more damage for us. That's from their own independent record that's been coming out. Mr. Hilderly, would you support Bill C-234? That's a bill. Let me remind you what that bill is. It's a bill that gave farmers an exemption from the carbon tax. Guess which party voted against it? Yours. Would you stand up for Oxford farmers? Thank you very much. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. CHP party is basically common sense. Follow the money. We had a conference in Glassford. 200 private jets flew there to save the environment. The reality was they were looking for business opportunities. Look at what's going on. Many of these people start foundations to fill up their own bank accounts. Think about it. Follow the money. Thank you. Sir. 
sorry, that, hopefully that's not on Roger's TV. Um, Mr. Hillerly, 30 seconds rebuttal, please. Yes, Mr. Conn, I stand up for farmers. I had a great discussion with four farmers last week who said that farmers need to help clean up the environment. Their fuel, gas, and diesel is exempt from carbon tax, and uh, the, the farmers feel that is part of their commitment to the environment and to Canada. Thank you very much. Going back to the mic, we have question seven at the mic. Remember, you have 10 seconds to ask the questions. This question is for the NDP candidate. As a law-abiding firearm owner, I enjoy recreational sports shooting and hunting. In our current political environment, it's become more difficult to be a law-abiding firearm owner. Oxford County is a very rural community. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you very much for the question. No, the t time limits are time limits. Mr. Grote, did you get the question? Yes, I did. Thank you. Please answer with, for one minute. I am personally not a gun owner, but I do recognize that we have a lot of laws in place right now to assure that gun owners in our community are able to have the weapons that they would like to. Um, there are, uh, current legislation is not going to take away guns from private gun owners. I think that's a, a principle that we can keep in place. My overarching principle is I feel that um, if we have registration for guns, which is something that I'm going to support, and if we have a policy where there's a period of delay before purchasing a firearm, I think those are two core principles that I'm always going to fight to maintain. Besides that, I think that we have a, a good system in place. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Conn, a 30-second response, please. The C-21 is a bill the Liberals brought forward to Parliament. It's taking away the rights of lawful gun owners. As a lawful gunner who shoots at the Oxford fishing game, I can tell you those guys are not the criminals. Trudeau's, under Trudeau's watch, 32% has been increased for violent crime. Those guns are coming from illegal border crossings. Those are illegal guns, not from the lawful gun owners. And so, Mr. Hilderley, would you um, reverse that bill, C-21, as well? I stand up for licensed firearm owners like farmers, sports shooters, and our hunters. Thank you. Mr. Marcus, 30-second response, please. I already answered this a few minutes ago. CHP is 100% endorsement of private gun ownership. It's a, it's a right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Mr. Hillary, 30-second response, please. Mr. Connor, you have to understand, my father was a hunter. My grandfather was a farmer, and he had a rifle on the farm for a purpose, and that was to protect his fields from groundhogs. They were law-abiding citizens, and we're not taking guns away from law-abiding citizens. We're trying to get semi-automatic guns off the streets so they don't kill people. Please. Thank you. I'm not a gun owner, but I have used a gun. Um, I was at a shooting range and I was able to fire a gun. Those are very powerful things. And for those legal gun owners that use those guns in hunting and sports, they're a responsible. Do you realize that their names are run every single day through the RCMP just to make sure they haven't got a speeding ticket or any violations? They are already scrutinized. And why don't you take a little bit more further um, action against the criminals? This seems to be attacking our legal gun owners, not our criminals. Those are the ones that are creating crime, not our legal gun owners. And Thank we need you very to stop much, this. Martin. Thank you. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. I was taught to do hunting and fishing because I'm an indigenous. That is how we supplemented our daily livelihood as children and teenagers and continuing on. So I support hunting and fishing. However, I disagree with the NDP statement that there should be no restrictions. There should be restrictions for safetiness because we have a mental health care issue in this country. 
There should be restrictions for safety. There should be no assault weapons needed for hunting. Thank this you, is a Ms. skill. Mr. Grote, 30 seconds rebuttal, please. Uh, my younger brother is an OPP officer, and at the end of the day, my stance on this issue is going to be about ensuring that he is safe and ensuring that he can keep our communities safe. That is going to be the core principle that guides my answer to this question moving forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Going back to the microphone, I believe your, your question number is eight, seven or eight. I am, yes. Eight or seven? Correct. Your question eight, right? Yeah. Oh. Perfect, sorry. Uh, my question is to Mr. Kana. You moved here in February to write for the Conservatives. Can you convince us as long-term Oxford County voters that you, are in, that you are invested in our community other than being here to be Pierre Polyev's parachute insider candidate from Ottawa? Mr. Kana, you have one minute to respond, please. <laughs> Just to correct the record, I moved here last year and I wasn't as lucky that I was able to born here. I wasn't one of those. And Oxford has been a great community where folks from all walks of life are choosing Oxford because of our values. And I share those values. And I wasn't lucky enough to be born here, but guess what? My son is. And I'm very excited for him that my son and my, so my wife and, my, and I are going to be raising my son here with those same values. And that's the great thing about Oxford. We're bringing in folks from all walks of life. And that's about being Canadian, so I'm super excited to be here. I appreciate all the great support we've been getting, and I've been blessed across this community. I have a, lo a, a lot of support from our farmers, from our seniors, from our lawful gun owners, from various folks that just want to get things done. They're tired of people just coming in, sitting in the back, and not doing anything. They want people that are going to be front and center fighting for Oxford values, and you can count on me to fight for our community day in, day out in Ottawa. Thank you very much. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. It's really simple. I requested in my opening statements, I'm one of you for 56 years. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30 second response, please. As I addressed in my opening remarks, I've given my service to this county for a long time. I've been a teacher, I've been an, uh, a, a realtor, my family grew up here, my kids grew up here. This is about Oxford County people. We need local representation in Ottawa and I want to be that strong voice in Ottawa representing the citizens of Oxford County. Response, please. Yes, I moved here in 2015 and I immediately applied to be a volunteer for the Township of Norwich on the Accessibility Advisory Committee Board. And in 2019, I ran for the People's Party of Canada here in Oxford to represent Oxford County. This is a, a county that I love, that I visited from the time that I was able to drive my vehicle to visit my best friend out here in Norwich. And I love this community because it's a safe and loving community. It still is today, and I stand by that, that everyone is welcome in Oxford, and we Thank love you, you all. Thank you very much, Ms. Martin. Why did you deny Oxford people the right to vote for candidate of their choice? Mr. PC party. You banned the right to, for the people to vote and the P PC banned people's voices and silenced their voices. These are violations of the charter of our human rights and freedoms. You remove people's rights and that is a dictatorship, not a democracy. And this is what I'm hearing when I go around door knocking. Thank you very much. Mr. Grove, 30 second response, please. Mr. Connor did move here last year in December, immediately after Dave's retirement. I have grown up here my entire life. I have served our community on the board of directors for two local hospitals. I graduated elementary school, I graduated high school. This is where I continue to live. And after this election, regardless of the results, this is where I'll still be. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Mr. Connor, 30 second rebuttal. Yeah, Mr. Hildley is very right. This is about Oxford. And it's and when your when your boss has been attacking, Justin Trudeau has been attacking Oxford for the last eight years, how do you stand up to that? It's sad to see that. That the same guy that you're gonna be working for has been attacking your fundamental values of our community. And that's my promise to the voters here in Oxford, that every single day you're gonna see somebody fighting for you and your values in Ottawa. We're gonna make sure that we stop this attack from Trudeau. Again, I wasn't lucky enough to be born here, but I'm so happy my, 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 my son is. And I'm gonna make sure we, we raise a good kid with the values of Oxford, Thank you, family Mr. values. Thank you. Going back to the mics for question number nine. Yes? Question is for Mr. Hilderman. Mr. Hilderman, you will assume the role of Trudeau's voice in Oxford and knowing that a vote for Gabe Hilderley is actually a vote for Trudeau. The voters need to know if you plan to promote the entire Trudeau platform, including President. Thank Trudeau you very Trudeau much for the practice. question. Thank you very much for the question. Mr. Hilderley, did you get the question? I think so. Okay. Mr. Hilderley, one minute response, please. One of the things that I found out about Mr. Trudeau is that he welcomes good open discussion. Uh, I want to make it clear that I believe in the liberal values and I believe in the good legislation that they have brought forward over the past few years. It's about protecting families, it's about protecting seniors, it's about promoting an economy that's healthy with good paying jobs, it's about protecting the environment, and I will support those things, definitely. Thank you very much. Ms. Martin, 30 second response, please. Thank you. So Dave, you obviously still support the mandates on the COVID and mandatory vaccination that your Liberal Party decided on at their convention in the summertime. So that's going to hurt people to have their freedoms and their rights taken away from them again and the limiting of travel. So you're going to support the carbon tax, which is making people not even be able to afford to put food on their table and deciding between a loaf of bread or a pound of hamburger because they can barely afford it. You can, you're supporting the inflation that's going on here in Canada that's affecting each and every single person that's sitting here today. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. Green Party Canada, we plan on promoting the people first. People must come first. This budget that we recently had from the Liberals does not do enough to help people. The Liberals had this choice, and they refused to help people right across this country. Matter of fact, they created an infliction of harm on people in every community. Enough is enough. We need to go back to the basics of the fundamentals of our democracy and ensure the people are service first. Mr. Grote, 30 second response, please. The question, in my opinion, is about how can you represent your own community's perspectives and not just listen to the perspectives of your party leader, your party platform. I don't see how that can be done, for instance, if you've just moved here four months ago and you're following by script the Conservative Party platform. But personally, I've grown up here, this is where I was born and raised, and I will make sure that our family and our community's perspectives are reflected in our party, in our platform, in our parliament. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Khan, a 30 second response, please. It's very, very clear that a vote for Mr. Hilderley is a vote for Justin Trudeau. Oxford does not need less Trudeau than you know Trudeau. And a vote for Mr. Hilderley is a vote for the carbon tax. A vote for Mr. Hilderley is for Justin Trudeau's fight and stance against our farmers. A vote for Mr. Hilderley and for Justin Trudeau is a vote against Oxford's values. On June 19th, let's send Justin Trudeau a message and vote Conservative. Thank you very much. Mr. Marcus, 30 second response, please. I'm the only unique candidate who is completely free to put a private member's bills on a consistent basis representing the people of Oxford. And I don't have to listen to somebody at the top of the ladder to tell me what to do. Thank you for that freedom. Mr. Cox, 
Beverly, 30 second rebuttal. This election is not about Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau will still be the Prime Minister at the end of election day. This election is about Oxford County and the best representation you can take to Ottawa. And I want to take Oxford solutions to Ottawa so uh, Ottawa can hear about us. Thank you very much. Okay, seeing the time, we are going to go back to the mic for one more question, but this unfortunately will be the last question of the evening so we can get the two-minute closing remarks from the candidates. So, the, with the la last question, go ahead, please. This is uh, directed to uh, Wendy Martin. Bill C-4, ban on conversion therapy, in favor or opposed? Ms. Martin, one minute response. I am opposed to Bill C-4. This takes away the parents' rights to decide what is best for their children. It puts in the rights for teachers, counselors, doctors, and the government to decide what is best for your child. Your child. That's your right. That's not the government's right. Bill C-4 goes too far. Bill C-4 talks about what's called conversion therapy. It takes the rights away from parents to talk about gender and sex with their child. It also takes it away from the church to be able to read the Bible properly when it announces that there are just two sexes, male and female. It's just the way that it is. It's the way that nature has made us. And it goes too far also to be allowing counselors and doctors and everybody else to decide to give puberty blockers to children without their parents knowing. This has been banned in many countries right now, including Norway, Sweden, the UK, and Finland. Thank there is no much. more gender. Ms. Baker, 30 second response, please. Oxford needs the most experienced candidate, and that is Cheryl Baker of Green Party Canada. Do not vote or elect someone who banned your right to vote here of your own candidate choice, or who silenced your vote to bring in a parish. Ms. Baker, candidate. I need you to answer what she oh. respond to her. This isn't your two oh, minute sorry. closing. <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. Uh, yes. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, you've just ran out of time, Ms. Baker. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Mr. Grote, 30 second response. Conversion therapy is an attack on members of LGBTQ communities. It's not even a thinly veiled attempt at being an attack. I'm firmly against it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Khan, a 30-second response, please. As a new father, I think it's very, very important that parents are part of the, the, uh, the actual uh, solution. They're part of the discussions that go on with the lives of their kids. You know, as a new father, I want to make sure that I'm sitting at the table to make those decisions with them as a family, as a unit, and I stand with that 100%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Marcus, 30-second response. Parents are the first building block of society. History has proven when governments take away those parental rights that the block that that enforces, society will crumble as time begins. It's a building block, and if it's destroyed, it will destroy the fabric of society. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hilderly, 30-second response, please. Yes, as I mentioned before, and I will, re I will um, again say, the Liberal Party is an all-inclusive party, and we respect that uh, all genders and all um, people of, of society need to be um, respected and included. Thank you. Martin, 30 second rebuttal, please. 
So Dave, an all-inclusive party, does that include parents or not? Because the parents have a right to their child. They born them, that baby was raised in that mother's tummy and was delivered, and they have rights. That child has rights to be able to talk to their parents without having the parents going to jail for five years. And I'll tell you this, as a grandmother, I'll go to jail for five years to talk to my grandchildren and my granddaughters about them being girls. And there is only girls and boys. What you decide after the age of Thank 18, you very much, go Ms. ahead Martin. and do Thank it. Thank you very much. Now we're in the two minute closing. Okay, so that takes us uh, into our two minute of closing by each candidate. We'll start with the Liberal, Liberal Party, David Hilbert. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you to the organizers for putting on the event tonight. And thank you to everybody who came out to listen and understand. During this campaign, I have been greeting people at the doors and chatting with them on the street, emphasizing the importance of having local representation in Ottawa. My experience with my community involvement over the past 24 years has always been to learn first and then to lead. And I will take that same approach to Ottawa. It is important in this election that we have Oxford's voice in Ottawa, not Ottawa's voice in Oxford. The Liberal Party will continue to support families, seniors, farmers, businesses, and the environment. On June the 19th, vote for me, David Hilderty, for Oxford. Remember, from Oxford, for Oxford. Thank you very much. From the People's Party, Wendy Martin. First of all, I'd like to thank all the organizers and for everyone that's coming out this evening. What a great um, amount of people coming out to hear and talk about the debates and things that we have to offer you. On June 19th, vote for a voice of Oxford in Ottawa, a voice that speaks for all people in Oxford, a voice that stands for parents, that stands for the pre-born, that stands for the elderly, that's going to talk about the, you know, our education system, it's going to talk about finance, make sure that we can reduce inflation. Whoever we vote in today does not change our government, but I can hold accountable your Liberal and NDP coalition, I can question them and I can put them on the spot. I can hold your Conservative Party accountable to the promises that they've made you to. When you're taking a look at your candidates here today and the topics that we're talking about, check our platforms. Make sure they're in writing and they can back it up. I'm sorry, Arpan, but Section 70 of your policy declaration will not allow you to vote an independent mind on abortion or any abortion legislations. It's right in your policy declaration. Please make that sure you are not allowed to vote on that. Thank you very much. This is your closing statement. Thank you. And now we've caught up to um, Cheryl Baker and the Green Party. We can go to the Cheryl Baker for the closing remarks. Okay. Oxford needs a, the most experienced candidate here representing you in Parliament. With my business importing, exporting background, dealing with NAFTA and policies with other countries that are non-democratic, understanding NATO and war strategy as well, because that determines how we conduct business. I am the most experienced candidate here, and that's why you need my voice in Parliament, representing the industries here in the Oxford County, automotive, and dairy agriculture as well, because of my agriculture, scientific research and development background. That is why you need the most experienced candidate up in Parliament. Thank Vote Cheryl well. Baker. That take us, takes us to the NDP party, Cody Grove. 
Debates like this can be a bit frustrating at times because when we're asked to only rebut each other, it gets to political infighting and it's often us critiquing each other instead of telling you what we would like to do. And that's very frustrating for me because of what I've heard so far this campaign with people who are living on the streets who are afraid that they're never going to have a place to call home. They are, do not have services for them to deal with addiction. They don't have resources for mental health. They can't afford to eat. We are losing all of our agricultural land. We are just infighting tonight and it's extremely frustrating because we want to be there for people in our community. This community has been here for me my entire life when my family needed food when we were children. Our community was here for me. When we needed shelter, our family or our community was here for me. When we needed social services, Oxford was here for me. And now I am ready to be here for Oxford to repay that debt of gratitude I have. I hope on June 19th you can consider me as your next member of parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now to the Conservative Party, Arpon Kaur. On the campaign trail, I've been very lucky. I've met with folks from all walks of life. I've met that farmer who's been farming for generations, the auto sector workers working at Toyota, Cami, that trucking, the trucker who helps support the supply chain. I've met folks across our great county. And one thing is very, very clear. Oxford is full of doers, people that want to roll up their sleeves and get to work. They want to make sure that there's common sense back in our government, that we get back to the basics and the government works for the people who have done the work. But they're sick and tired of the same old, same old, and they're sick and tired of Justin Trudeau dictating his Ottawa knows best approach to our riding. And that's why I'm running. And I'm running because I know Oxford is a very, very special place. We have so much potential. We have the agriculture sector. We have the two massive auto sector plants. We have the 401, the 403 intersecting here in our riding. Unlimited potential, yet nobody's been fighting for us. We have to make sure that Oxford is front and center. So on June 19th, you have a decision to make. Justin Trudeau will keep his attacks going on our community. We have to send him a message that a vote on June 19th for a liberal is going to damage our community. It's going to be a vote for the carbon tax. So vote for me on June 19th is going to make sure that we ax the carbon tax, we stand up for our farmers, we stand up for our lawful gun owners, that we remove the gatekeepers that are blocking Oxford's full potential. Let's grow more, let's make more, and let's unleash Oxford's full potential. On June 19th, vote Conservative. Thank you. To the Christian Heritage Party, John Marcus. First of all, I want to thank for the opportunity. Secondly, I want to apologize for that off comment that I made. The next issue is, if I was to go to Ottawa, I would go join many committees on the agriculture side to put practical, common sense solutions on the table. I would also enter a private member's bill to introduce the death penalty for drug dealers. They kill more people than guns, 100,000 in the States last year, probably 10,000 in Canada. And then they go and put that money into a Bitcoin machine and have their yachts, Rolls Royces, jet planes, and mansions, while the suffering on the streets is just simply incredible. The real reason I also ran, Oxford has got an enormous amount of credible leaders. It has demonstrated work ethic, because we've got two auto plants, because of our work ethics. Why do we have to be insulted with a candidate that comes into our county we have capable leaders here. We've had cabinet ministers. We've had ag leaders. It's just simply incredible. But the real reason I'm running, I'm compelled to run for one reason only. If you are troubled by the recent events in Oxford County, so you can go to sleep at night before God with a clear conscience and vote and do your civic duty. If you are anxious about those things, vote John, June 19. Thank you. Thank you very much. In closing, I would like to take this time to thank Rogers TV. I would like to thank Ron and Kat Hope at the back for screening your questions and keeping me so I didn't have the same question asked twice. Thank you very much. Scott Bradford, the financial secretary, for doing the sound. Melissa Holden, the vice president of Unifor Local 636, for keeping us on time. And from all of us, thank you very much. Thank you for the candidates for coming and participating. Thank you for keeping my rules down and, and, and harassment out of here. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you for coming and taking the time and all of the all of those that emailed questions thank you good luck to all of you don't forget to vote on june 19th